Church throughout the nations, live from Telegracia International Studios, prepare to receive the desired of all nations, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Dr. José Luis de Jesús, the man Christ Jesus. Yo, Jesucristo Hombre. Today's topic, remember that a few years ago we spoke about the path of life. Today, we will speak about how it was formed and how we discovered it. Let's read the verse that presents the topic, and it's Psalm 16, 15. It says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Today we read this verse already fulfilled because it says it says it there in, in the future tense that it will show. But it has already shown us the path of life, the way of life. Actually, this psalm is dedicated to the first manifestation of the Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. This is why in the previous verse it says that he will not allow his saint to see corruption, but that it would follow with the second manifestation of Jesus Christ. As it says in Hebrews, that he is the, the preview of the manifestation of Christ opening the way for the last manifestation where he, Christ, lived again. So when I arrived, the garden was disorganized. The foundation in apostasy. Nothing was clearly, clearly seen. And this is where the two angels manifest to me and reveal the grace and that I'm dead to sin but I couldn't see the end of the tunnel. I began to enjoy that truth that I was dead to sin, therefore sin can't rule over me because if I'm dead to it, how can it rule over me? In the past, I was dead in sin. Now I am dead to sin, thanks to the sacrifice of Jesus of Nazareth. But then the angels reveal to me and growing in grace begins in me and so you can imagine the mess the doctrinal knots you you couldn't see it was it was really difficult but naturally I found something that no one had found in 2,000 years which is to feel perfect in Christ Jesus to know that you are not a sinner that sin was put away that the Lord took sin away from earth in one day. That the power of sin is the law. And now that the law is removed and Christ putting an end to the law, sin loses all its power. Well, I began to see the land full of weeds and bushes. The foundation was there, but it's like a building when the construction begins and then it's abandoned due to irregularities in, in the construction and it's left there for months and years. The bars get mold, it begins to have to have weeds and, and bushes and you can't see what's there. But the Lord began. I first learned a little bit about predestination. I began to learn that there is no such thing as a free will. And this is why today there's such a battle, the press Ask itself, where is God with all these earthquakes? What, God doesn't attend to this? He doesn't, why doesn't he avoid them? People ask themselves many things with all these earthquakes in, in Haiti and Chile, the catastrophes that are now taking place in a weekly basis. And I warned you that it would now happen in great proportions. But people 
ask themselves, where is God in all of this? And it's because they have a veil called true will. They don't know the character of God. They don't know that God gives life and takes it away. God does as he wants. And even dead, God is God is God of the living and of the dead. That's why Romans 13, 9 says that he lived again to be the Lord of the living and the dead. Be in the cloud of witnesses or in a physical body, the Lord continues to be the Lord of his chosen. But naturally, you need to understand that he created vessels of wrath prepared for destruction and he will destroy those. And sometimes it's painful because you see it in the life of a baby or an elder of an entire family that drowned, died, that rocks fell on top of them. But God is in control of all these things, in case you didn't notice, my friend. God is the author of the bad and the good. And so God began to work in me explaining the two apostleships. This, is, this was the land I began to see the foundation in and where and where to build upon to be able to follow the foundation that Paul laid, where he said, I, like the headmaster builder, laid the foundation, which is, which is Jesus Christ. But the apostasy laid a shadow over it. And this is where the two apostleships, I realized that there are two gospels, one of the circumcision and one of the uncircumcision, something that no one had done in 2,000 years. And then I realized that I was in a false apostleship in my mind. I had contamination of the apostles. I had the contamination of the apostles. When the apostleship ceased, ended, it ended in Calvary Cross. As soon as Christ died on the cross, that apostleship of the apostles ended and a new apostleship began. The one of the Apostle Paul, a new covenant for us Gentiles. There, I had to remove a lot of weeds, bushes, dry dry leaves, hay, st straw, and wood. I took out a lot of things, but I was still missing the two seeds. In this world, there are two seeds, one that comes from Cain and one from Abel. I was missing two foundations, one of works and one of faith. I understand it, develop it, remove the dust of those two doctrines, slowly, slowly edify, not setting the eyes on buildings or money, but on what God loves most, which is you, the church. This is what I've been doing for many years, well, since 1973 forward, I have worked with what is not perishable, with what has value, with the lives that God brings to me to edify with the truth. And honestly, it wasn't easy, but it was achieved. I was able to clean the foundation, and now it's not, will show the path of life. It is, you have shown me the path of life. What Joel says in chapter 1 is fulfilled. In verse 6, it says, For a nation has come up against my land, strong and without number. His teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he has the fangs of a fierce lion. Verse 12 says, the, fine, the vine has dried up, and the fig tree has withered. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are withered. Surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. Look at that point. The joy has withered, extinguished from the sons of men. This is why Psalms says, in your presence is fullness of joy. The joy has returned. The vine recovered its branches. The vine is clean. The vine has been washed. The vine is now beautiful, which is you, church. A church without blemish or wrinkle, without contamination of doctrine of man, without rudiments. The vine is beautiful already. It's like the harvest is ready to take the first fruits because the land has been cleansed. It shines. The path of life is clear. The angels are clear to execute the manifestation where the heavens will shake and the earth has moved from its place. 
chapter 2 of Joel, verse 1 and 2, says, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountain. A people come great and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. It's those strong people that the Lord has raised. In chapter 15 of John, it says, I am the true vine, Jesus speaking, and my father is the vine dresser. I am the wine that you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for me. For without me, you can do nothing. That was meant for these days. Because he wasn't farming anything back then. There was nothing there, only circumcision. That, that was for these times. And although Jesus said it, the same Jesus that was there, which is the same one presently here, it is fulfilled in him. Just like it says in Isaiah, For unto us a child is born. It says, Mighty God, seeing him as a grown-up already. It says his kingdom will not end. Those are different stages of Jesus Christ. So just as John 15 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. But without me, you can do nothing. Now he is trimming the, trimming the branches, but without me, you can do nothing. And there's a confession that I want to participate in. What a clear confession. Of all the tracings, this blessed listens. He made a summary. And there is wisdom here. If you can listen to it and write it down, it'd be great to this email, this collaborator. So you can hand it out. I recommend it. This email was sent to Alvaro and he sent it to me. And it reads, I, I, I want to read what it says to you. It's very long. I had to shorten it. It says, it says, all my life is led by the angels and everything works for the best. Thank you, powerful angels, for listening to me. Here, he is acknowledging the angelical covering. I receive that the Father of our Lord is manifested in my mortal body, and it gives fruit of rejuvenation and health. Today, I receive abundance of life to maintain healthy and perfect to my heart, my kidney, my brain, and my blood circulation in all my body. I receive that today my thoughts are organized and I don't feel bad with anyone. I don't get upset. I reason with clarity. I activate my feelings and I destroy every bad thought. I don't judge anyone and today I submit to the love of the truth to renew my way of thinking, of speaking and of proceeding. And to conclude, he says, I have power. My, my word has power. I declare in the countdown of the remaining days the destruction of the Vatican and the transformation of our Father, Jose Luis de Jesus Miranda, our Father. He didn't declare his transformation because if he declares mine, all of us afterwards will be transformed. And what a beautiful confession a tidy confession, complete confession. I have it jotted down here in my notebook because I think it's a confession where I am helped by the members of the body. I as a body and the body, the ligatures, help one another. Well blessed. It will be until another occasion. I declare that you're blessed, reigning in life, obedient. I declare that even those people that might not understand, I declare that they look and I receive that their veil is destroyed. 
We're blessed. I love you very much. We continue counting down the days. Until next time, blessed with all spiritual blessings.